everybody, it's Dr. Eric Ball Cabbage. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today I want to answer a viewer question. And that is, is there any links between hypothyroidism causing reflux? And there definitely is. So I'll cover a couple of those things today. Before we talk about how those links are, I want to make sure I reinforce a couple things. There is a difference, and we've talked about it, I've talked about this on the videos many times, between glandular hypothyroidism where there's destruction of the thyroid gland and it can't make enough thyroid hormone and cellular hypothyroidism. There just isn't sufficient levels of T3 getting into the receptors or getting into the cells, binding to the receptors, stimulating metabolism, okay? Many people have good glandular function but have cellular resistance or cellular hypothyroidism. So let's talk a couple of things. So one of the mechanisms that can be associated with reflux is that when there's decreased T3 at the cellular level of the esophage of the esophageal cells, the cells that line the esophagus. So uh, we can have decreased esophageal motility. That means it makes it harder to swallow. The esophageal cells don't work as well as they should. Uh, when you have difficulty swallowing, we call that dysphagia. But it can also impact the lower esophageal sphincter, the sphincter that kind of separates the esophagus from the stomach, and that can allow more stomach acid to be. Uh, belched up or burped up or get up into the esophagus. Now the stomach is designed to be able to handle and manage a very acidic pH, okay? The, the stomach lining is covered with uh, a mucin or a mucus that actually protects it. The esophagus doesn't have that uh, protection, so it's not designed to have acidic pHs. It likes a, a pHs of somewhere around seven, which is neutral, and the stomach acid can get down to anywhere uh, between three and one at the low end, where there's uh, that is really really acidic. It could eat through your through your hardwood floor if you drop that level of acid on the floor. But the mute, the stomach is designed to take that. The esophagus isn't. Okay, that's why we don't want reflux. So most people believe that reflux is caused by too much acid uh, in the stomach, and that's burning their esophagus. And that's not really the case. What's really going on is they don't have enough stomach acid to help keep that esophageal, lower esophageal sphincter closed. And the acid, even though it's not super acidic, is still coming up, irritating the esophageal lining. Taking antacids or things that reduce your stomach acid will reduce the damage that occurs to the esophagus, but it doesn't reduce uh, reflux. Matter of fact, you may actually have more episodes of reflux, but it's not at a pH where it's actually damaging and destroying um, the esophageal lining. So another mechanism is that when we have decreased T3 in our parietal cells, now the parietal cells are, the cell, are cells within the stomach that actually produce stomach acid. So if we have decreased T3 at the parietal cells, we have decreased stomach acid. Decreased stomach acid production is associated with reflux, okay? So anybody who's got reflux, decreased stomach acid, and that be, can become that can be caused by a cellular hypothyroid condition. So almost everybody that has reflux should have a good comprehensive thyroid evaluation and look for the signs and indicators of cellular resistance or cellular hypothyroidism. A third mechanism is that when there's decreased cellular levels of T3 in the GI tract, uh, this impacts the the motility of the GI tract directly. So we have decreased GI motility. Anytime there's decreased GI motility, we get the we get what we call constipation. There's bacteria that's in the GI tract, and the slower the movement of the food through the GI tract, the more bacteria can start to act on that food, uh, create more gases, more fermentation, uh, more toxins, and that can create, as you create more gas and more pressure, we can have a tendency for the fluids to back up and that can force the acids in, up into the esophagus. Another mechanism is that anytime there's damage to the thyroid gland itself, uh, typically the most common cause of that is Hashimoto's, the autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland doesn't just make T4 and T3, it also makes something called thyroid motilin. And thyroid motilin is key to moving the GI tract. So motilin is typically made in the enterochromaffin cells of the GI tract. Thyroid hormone helps with that support. However, if you lose the thyroid gland and you have a significant amount of damage to the thyroid gland, whether you had it removed, radiated, uh, or just a lot of destruction from Hashimoto's, 
we lose the modulin and we lose the thyroid modulin that has been associated with constipation. And again, if you have slowed motility of the GI tract, you get constipation, you get bacterial overgrowth, you get extra, extra fermentation, you get gas buildup and pressure, and that can force the stomach acids back up into the esophagus. A third mechanism I want to talk about is parietal cell antibodies. So the primary cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's autoimmunity or Hashimoto's disease. When you have one autoimmune disorder, there's high probability of having others. And one of those common ones we see is parietal cell antibodies. And if there's autoimmune attack against the parietal cells, then the parietal cells can't make stomach acid. If you can't make stomach acid, decreased acid production in the stomach increases the symptoms associated with reflux, okay? So there's a lot more we could talk about, but the key is if you have gas, pressure, bloating, reflux symptoms, burning in the esophagus, you definitely don't want that destruction to occur. So in the short run, uh, taking some type of antacid until you can get it calmed down may not be a terrible idea, but you have to really get to root cause. Many times supporting people with betaine HCL can help uh, improve acid production uh, or reduce their reflux symptoms. Sometimes things like lemon water prior to a meal, uh, apple cider vinegar, um, digestive bitters, those things can all help with the production of stomach acid uh, and reduce the symptoms of reflux. But if you do have reflux, please find a functional medicine practitioner. Get evaluated for a, with a good thyroid panel. Have them look to see if you have cellular hypothyroidism and then have them ha make sure you work with them to figure out the root cause of why you have reflux. If you just chronically take antacids to get rid of the symptoms of reflux, you open yourself up to chronic GI problems, chronic bacterial and yeast overgrowth, chronic inflammation, and more inflammatory and autoimmune disorders. Okay, so hopefully this uh, Thyroid Thursday video was helpful. Look for more videos in the coming weeks. All right, take care.